Okay, so the quote by Hunter S. Thompson, this is a, he wrote advice in a letter to his grandson, Will, in 2005, just days before his death. Uh, Hunter S. Thompson out of Louisville, Kentucky, a Louisvillian radical who said that the uh, Kentucky Derby is decadent and depraved, one of his most famous articles. Uh, the inspiration behind the movie, uh, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, starring Johnny Depp. And um, so, Hunter S. Thompson, okay, walk tall, kick ass, learn to speak Arabic, love music, and never forget that you come from a long line of truth seekers, lovers, and warriors. Walk tall, kick ass, learn to speak Arabic, love music, never forget that you come from a long line of truth seekers, lovers, and warriors. So, one more time, Hunter S. Thompson, walk tall. Kick ass, learn to speak Arabic, love music, and never forget that you come from a long line of truth seekers, lovers, and warriors. And that's true. America, while we have our customs and things that we like to do uh, frequently, we also have a current of being uh, against the grain and being unique and being different. We started out, you know, with revolution, right? So revolution, we voted against our... Uh, uh, our king and our royal aristocracy and said we wanted to be free and independent we wanted our own government right at least some of us you know the the landowning white rich his aristocracy kind of like the landowners that were all involved in drew thornton's uh drew thornton's the bluegrass conspiracies case so the white landed rich uh uppity snobby the owner class of lexington it's the reason why the Derby gives me the heebie-jeebies, gives me the creeps. So, yeah. <laughs> Hunter S. Thompson, said, telling uh, everybody to speak Arabic, walk tall, kicking ass, uh, and, and some other things. Uh, speak Arabic, like music. <laughs> Just read it. Just read it. Uh, Let's see. Hold on. Hold on. Scanning through. I posted this on my Facebook wall, so I'm just scanning through a ton of posts. Um, that uh, my political post that I post. Uh, probably too much, I think. Hunter S. Thompson. Walk tall. Kick ass. Learn to speak Arabic. Love music, and never forget that you come from a long line. Long line of truth seekers, lovers, and warriors. People looking for the truth, people who love, and people who are warriors who fight for that which they love. Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah, I miss him. I miss him. And John Y. Brown Jr., who was the, I want to say, 55th governor. Yeah. John Y. Brown Jr. was Kentucky's 55th governor on December 11th, 1979. So, 79 to 83, he would have been the governor preceding uh, the, 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 the governor that, was, that would have been governor at the time during Drew Thornton's uh, death. Drew Thornton died in 1985, and John uh, Young Brown Jr.'s uh, tenure was 79 to 83. John Y. Brown Jr. would become Kentucky's 55th. 55th governor on December 11, 1979, after an outstanding career as a businessman and corporate executive. John Y. Brown Jr. began his political career managing his father's campaigns for a number of statewide races in the 1950s and 1960s. He became involved in the, with the Democratic Party at the national level when he served as vice chairman for John F. Kennedy's presidential campaign in Kentucky. Uh, Brown was, so he was on JFK's presidential campaign. That's pretty, that's kind of sweet. Brown was named Honorary Treasurer of the Democratic Party in 1972 after conceiving and directing a series of national telethons that ultimately raised $19 million and saved the party from bankruptcy. So I guess John Y. Brown's a, kind of a big deal. He's kind of a big deal around here, right? He announced uh, his intention to enter the governor's race in 1979. John Y. Brown Jr. won the election handily in a whirlwind 60-day campaign. So John Y. Brown, in 60 days, was able to throw a campaign and was able to get people uh, uh, excited to uh, vote for him. 
He uses business expertise in filling his administration with successful business people and keeping his campaign pledge of running business like a gov uh, uh, like running the government like a business, where they only give a crap about profits and money and not about the health or the wealth uh, or the welfare of the people. Governor Brown received national recognition for reducing the size of government by 22% while projecting Kentucky as a leading state and attracting new industry. He used the national, nationally publicized slogan, Kentucky and Company, the state that is run like a business. So, businessman, he uses millions that he got from possibly cocaine sales and was able to, in 60 days, become governor of Kentucky. So, a possible cocaine smuggler. Uh, he said he don't even know what cocaine looks like, so he was Harvard educated. How does how does he not know what cocaine looks like? He's just a powder. I mean, it looks like a, a, a powdered sugar, powdered sugar and cocaine uh, to the naked eye uh, look the exact same thing, just white powder. So that's what cocaine looks like. You don't have to actually see it to to know that. Uh, John Y. Brown Jr. is one of America's foremost entrepreneurs. In 2009, Brown was recognized by the prestigious Harvard Business School as one of the great American business leaders of the 20th century. Harvard spent over eight years compiling a list of honorees in an effort to identify and chronicle the lives of 20th century men and women whose business leadership shaped the ways people live, work, and interact. He also recognized as Entrepreneur of the Year. At the age of 29, his partner, Jack C. Macy of Nashville, Tennessee, purchased KFC Corporation, Kentucky Fried Chicken Corporation, from its founder, Colonel Harlan Sanders for $2 million. From 1964 to 1971, Brown established a worldwide reputation as a businessman and entrepreneur when he built the company into the world's largest fast food company establishing by establishing 3,500 KSC restaurants. He is credited with building the Colonel into the world's most recognized personal brand. Colonel Sanders is Kentucky's most recognized uh, citizen. Colonel Sanders. I would say Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln is second. And then, and then I'm not sure after that. Ashley Judd, uh, Larry Flint, Charlie Manson, George Clooney, Johnny Depp. There's a couple other uh, famous Kentuckians. Diane Sawyer. I guess World News Today, ABC. Uh, Brown established a worldwide reputation. He established 3,500 KFC restaurants. He's credited with building the Colonel into a big brand. Most recognized personal brand after going the political after going public, the company was sold for two hundred and eighty five million dollars to Hugh Blind Inc. Incorporated. So he, they sold it to Hugh Blind. I guess he doesn't own it anymore. Uh, Brown was recognized with launching the dynamic growth of the fast food industry, also with Ray Kroc. So John Y. Brown is um, kind of revolutionary, to be honest with you. He's becoming he, he got into power, got into state government, he's got this. Uh, Business World KFC franchise going, so that's a, another tyrannical uh, fascist organization. Corporation is just a piece of paper uh, in a filing cabinet granted by the state government. Um, so, John Y. Brown Jr., he was born December 28, 1933, so four years after the Great Depression, uh, which would make him right around <coughs> 80 years old. So John Y. Brown, he's um, around 80 years old. <laughs> uh, <coughs> um, 55th governor of Kentucky, 79 to 83, known for building KFC into a multi-million dollar restaurant chain. He is currently single. He's been married three times, the second time to former Miss America Phyllis George. Among his children are news anchor... Pamela Ashley Brown and former Secretary of State of Kentucky John Y. Brown III. The son of a U.S. Congressman, Brown's talent for business became evident in college where he made a substantial amount of money selling Encyclopedia Britannica sets. So, Encyclopedia Britannica, he sold it. At their, which I'm sure there's pictures of cocaine in there, so I don't know if I believe his uh, press conference when he says he didn't know what they look like. 
After briefly practicing law with his father, he purchased Kentucky Fried Chicken from founder Harlan Sanders in 1964. Brown turned the company into a worldwide success, and he sold his interest in the company for a huge profit in 1971. He then invested in several other restaurant ventures, but none matched the success of KFC. During the 1970s, he also owned, at various times, three professional basketball teams, the American Basketball Association of uh, Mass American Basketball Association's Kentucky Colonels, the National Basketball Association's Buffalo Braves, and Boston Celtics. Uh, which he, so he owned the Boston Celtics. Okay, so that's more. Uh, K owned KFC, Boston Celtics, and um, 55th Governor in the early 80s when the class war in America started. When all a lot of politicians were being like uh, uh, Grover Norquist when he said that they said they want to make government so small they can. Uh, drown it in a bathtub. So, eliminating government and let get government out of the way of big business and let big business do whatever they want to do and hope that that works, right? Like the 2008 recession, you know, that did a great job for that. Or the pollution or the other million myriad problems of uh, the blue rest. So, despite having shown little inclination to towards politics, Brown surprised Many political observers by declaring his candidacy for governor in 1979. With the state and nation facing difficult economic times, Brown promised to run the state government like a business. A strong media campaign funded by his personal, personal fortune allowed him to win the Democratic primary and to go on to defeat former Republican governor Louis B. Nunn in the general election. Because he owed few favors to established political leaders, he appointed many successful business people to state posts instead of making political appointments. Following through on his campaign promise to make more diverse appointments, he named a woman and an African American to his cabinet. During his tenure, Brown exerted less influence over the legislat legislature than previous governors. And so he's not like uh, um, the strong governor, the strong governor, Lou, uh, Carol. Um, uh, Julian Carroll, Julian Carroll, who's the strong governor, strong governor, the blackboard governor. He was taking all the legislature and like writing on the blackboard what his ideas for the legislature were. Uh, so he was kind of uh, right there in the middle, spearheading uh, the decisions in the legislature, which is why he's known as a strong governor. Um, he was also, you know, like real fascist, so he made like decisions. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure exa exactly. There's a the, uh, the, there are several things he was involved, you know, uh, his name's mentioned in the Bluegrass Conspiracy with the Drew Thornton case, and also Julian Carroll um, is, uh, uh, was governor when the uh, Beverly Hills Supper Fire Club burned. Uh, Julian Carroll was governor when that happened, which had killed a grip shover, uh, someone in my, uh, in my family, so... The Beverly Hills Supper Fire Club was not, nobody was found responsible for the, the many deaths that had died, which was, I think, the second uh, most deaths in a, a fire that had died. And I don't even know if I'm going to get a chance to read this. Might have to go to video six, but okay. So he uh, he uh, he named a woman an African American to his cabinet, which is a good thing. During his tenure, Brown exerted less influence over the legislature than previous governors and was re frequently absent from the state, leaving Lieutenant Governor Martha Lane Collins, Martha Lane Collins, the first female governor of Kentucky, uh, as acting governor for more than one quarter of his term. He was governor for four years, and Martha Lane Collins was governor for at least one year since he was never in Kentucky when he was the governor. He briefly considered a run for U.S. Senate after his gubernatorial term, uh, but withdrew from the race after only three weeks, uh, citing health issues. He has continued to invest in business ventures. The most high profile was that of Kenny Rogers Roasters, a wood-roasted chicken restaurant he founded with uh, country music star Kenny Rogers. So this is uh, John Y. Brown, Jr., who is the son of John Y. Brown, Sr., who was born in 1900. And died in 1985, and he was a state representative for nearly three decades, serving one term as Speaker of the Kentucky House of Representatives and as a majority floor leader during the term of Governor Edward T. Breathitt. As a Democrat, he was elected to one term in the U.S. House of Representatives to an at-large seat elected statewide on a general ticket. He was an unsuccessful candidate for the Democratic nomination for governor in 1939. Uh, which was exactly 40 years before his son would throw his hat in the ring, an unsuccessful candidate for the United States Senate in 1946 and 1966. So he ran t two more times for the Senate seat. 
um, which are Rand Paul and Mitch McConnell are Kentucky's current senators. So they are our representatives. They're 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 a great pair. You got the old Republican Guard and the new Republican Guard uh, right here in the state of Kentucky. We always got countercurrents. We have plenty of race, racist, hate-filled, racist, Confederate racist, white supremacists here. Uh, but we also have Muhammad Ali, the greatest, uh, you know, who stood up uh, during the 60s and is a hero today. Um, so, yeah, John Y. Brown, more Bluegrass Conspiracy coming up.